ball of the innings. And he's put it away. Oh, has it? Yes, into the ground. Six sixes and it over. Yuvrat Singh finishes things off in style. A certain sports athlete is looking to come out of retirement, which is a dilemma because this individual is now 38 and a half years old. In normal parlance, it is still young, but in sports parlance, 38 means that you are reaching that senior citizen age as far as the domain of sports is concerned. For a major part of 17 and a half years, this individual was a respected one as far as the domain of cricket and the Indian cricket is concerned. But post-2017, this individual was not selected or he decided to call it a day or as is often the term the team management was looking for youngsters they had even selected a few youngsters who would go on to play for the next 17 years of course this is a decision between the indian cricket board officials and this individuals which to come out of retirement and play for the country again. But the dilemma is, will the board decide to take him on his word and say that, yes, you can play. The selector will make sure that if you are fit and you have enough form and runs, you can be given a chance to play again in the Indian team. Or will the selectors say that, no, you have reached that age where your fitness, your form, your body movement is slightly stiff, that we are looking to build a pool of young players who would play for the next decade. Either way, it is a dilemma for the team management as well as the selectors and the Indian cricket board. And how do you handle this situation? Well, that is something that we do not know as yet. Was his retirement out of seriousness? Was he just pulling the leg of his teammates and the Indian cricket board? Well, this is something which is open to interpretation. But let's look at the idea of sports and athletes coming out of retirement. Rather, certain sports looking towards younger players. Now remember in the current US Open, the likes of Djokovic, Federer, Nadal have reached the age which is often called an old age in sports. While Federer is 39, Nadal and Djokovic are in their mid 30s at 32 and 33 respectively. While Federer is most likely to call it a day. Remember, he is not participating in the US Open because of reasons which he decided not to put himself in any kind of strife. And then Djokovic was disqualified from the tournament for his actions at a match official. And then Nadal obviously is also not playing. Which means that the current US Open has been called a star-less tournament because these three individuals are not part of the lineup. Means these individuals are not likely to win it. And there would be a few new individuals who would be making their mark. But will we give these new individuals like Dominic Thiem and the others the same kind of respect, the same kind of awe? The same kind of over publicity that we have given to Federer, Nadal and Djokovic over the years. We did not even appreciate the efforts of the Indian player Sumit Nangal who made it to a certain point in the US Open. Yes, he did not go all the way. He did not win. He is not even in the final four. 
we can be assured that we have a tennis star on our hands an indian tennis star is it time to move away from the likes of mahesh bhupathi and leander pace i suppose so yes the irony is that it is very difficult for us especially as the indian side of the media to give any kind of respect to any indian player who makes it all the way to such tournaments that is the wimbledon the roland garo the us open the australian open and other such tournaments but when it comes to players from other countries we nearly prostrate before them giving them divine status but now back to the question of retirement and this individual's wish to play again remember a week before he wished to play again he wanted to play for the australian t20 tournament and for now since he is no longer a contracted player he is retired he doesn't need any kind of no objection certificate from the indian cricket board means he would be able to play for a team in the australian t20 tournament which is due to start in december if the selectors heed to his wish and the indian cricket board the team management and other stakeholders decide that yes we can give this guy a chance even if it's for a few months yes age will be a big factor so if hypothetically this individual gets a chance to play again for the team even if he is at 38 and a half years old then he would be a contracted or a semi contracted player which means that if he wants to play for the australian domestic tournament he may not be able to play but coming out of retirement and playing straight away is a rarity in professional sports like football hockey cricket baseball basketball where sports athlete are not looked at just for their talents but if they can help their team earn a victory which in turn will get a lot of revenue and then they will make sure that this individual is an asset well for yuvraj singh it's a situation which is dilemmatic if he plays then he may not get a chance to play for the australian 20 over tournament as another indian player who retired a month ago was very clear on his terms that once i retire i close the doors back on the sport and i move away so is this individual confused about playing has he not moved away is it time for him to get into the management and the coaching side of things because eventually you have to go there sports is such a profession where age is going to play a huge role in defining what you are and the undertaker despite being in his prime felt the need that he had to walk away even though he retired at 56 remember undertaker retired at 56 but we do not often compare world of professional wrestling and professional sports like ufc aew wwe and their athletes to sports that are amateur that is amateur wrestling hockey cricket despite this player's iconic status and his contribution to the team over the past 17 and a half years it won't be a walk in as far as walking in the team is concerned there will be a lot of factors terms and conditions through which he can make a comeback into the team a team which has already moved away from players who have retired they are looking at what we call the youth remember even this player was a part of that youth 17 to 18 years ago so if you look at it in hindsight he's been there done that understood that once an individual's time is up talking about coming out of retirement is always a tricky subject this is saurabh and, and you're listening, listening to my favorite, favorite talk, talk show, show the bbc show, show with aditya professional sports like wwe is one of those rare sports which has had a good mix of 
human element as well as using technology means that despite all the technology available and all our fascination towards humanoids and robots there is still a referee who makes sure that his decisions are the final no matter how controversial there is still a ring announcer who has only 2 minutes on that stage to announce what is the match who are the competing individuals and how the result would be decided and there is still a timekeeper an individual who uses an old school timing device that is ringing the bell every time a match starts but with no crowds allowed in sports stadiums this particular profession and this particular company has adapted to sports like a fish takes to water introducing a virtual audience the pyrotechnics the thunderdome and other such technological interventions which has a fine balance like other sports you may call this a widget thing but there are no replays which means that no matter how controversial the decision is if the match ends in a strange manner the referee's decision is final means there is no var that is virtual action replay as one has seen in football and there is no replay umpire in what we see in basketball where the players challenge the decision of the standing referees or in tennis where also the line umpire after looking at replays decides whether the ball is out of line whether it has touched the net or whether any other such decision needs to be taken of course the most popular one that is the drs decision review system that is using the ultra edge that is the snico technology as well as the ball tracking technology which has received all kinds of plaudits as well as criticism from various quarters relationship between sports and technology is something which is quite ubiquitous production of video games is one way to show the immersive technology means that an audience one can still be a part of the action whether you call it old school or any other such nomenclature why i like wwe's idea about having no replays is because the action is so fast paced so much time would be wasted if everybody starts looking at the replays yes after a controversial decision is made and the episodes end in the next episode the rematch is announced between the two athletes who fought without making it controversial a certain decision is made but remember even calling for the rematch is decided by the human elements as i said robots play a very minimal role as far as the introduction of technology in sports like or professional arenas like wwe ufc aew is concerned the question has always been why do you need a time keeper in the arena of robotics why can't we just have a humanoid ring the bell well it doesn't work the human element has to be there no matter how much we get awed by technology such things can not be decided by artificial intelligence they don't have the cognition they don't have that impromptu decision making skills thus referees play a huge role when it comes to combat sports like boxing wrestling ultimate fighting and no matter how much sports adapts to technology referees will play a huge role especially in combat roles and there would be no technology ever created to challenge them won't be a conversation about whether or not introducing automated technology or replay technology in combat sports is a decision or not action is fast 
space there is hardly any time for any of the individuals to think wait for the replace and it is not about being struck in a jurassic era or in a stone age that is how combat sport functions if you don't see two humans beat each other up there is no fun i have played video games when it comes to combat sport and despite all the fun it tries to garner it's not fun as i know the video games are artificial in the fantasy but it helps nowhere else so how does sports and technology work together well that depends on the nature of sport and is unique to the nature of each sport so yes it's not comparable but minimal technology in other ways is always useful while sports like nba baseball and the professional combat wrestling have adapted to the virtual audience despite all the talk about all kinds of technology available the cricketing fraternity the cricketing bodies have not yet even experimented as far as using virtual audience is concerned let me tell you virtual audience is an anomaly it is not the future we should stop saying these things because in my viewpoint i want to see audience stuff like a can of sardines in a sport stadium despite all the fear about this pandemic circus and all the fear that your aerosols will travel and infect someone else well that is something which cannot be helped so you think that talking too loud in public is a strict no no because our aerosols or our spit travel to somebody else well that is something which has not been proven and is still in that experimental stage you cannot tell people to stop talking just because things travel because that part is a complete hog wash this, this is sort of and, and you're listening, listening to my, my favorite, favorite talk show, show the, the, the bg show, show with, with aditya this week we are going to start the reading of popular poem a well known poem of the 18th and the 19th century the wasteland by t s eliot part 1 the burial of the dead april is the cruelest month breeding lilacs out of the dead land mixing memory and desire stirring the roots with spring rain winter kept us warm covering earth in forgetful snow feeding a little life with dried tubers summer surprised us coming over the stan bergis with a shower of rain we stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the hof garden and drank coffee and talked for an hour gar keen fusin stam os lituan h deutsch and when we were children staying at the arc dukes my cousins he took me out on a sled and i was frightened he said marie marie hold on tight and down we went in the mountains there you feel free i read much of the night and go south in the winter what are the roots that clutch what branches grow out of this stony rubbish son of man you cannot say or guess for you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter the cricket no relief and the dry stone no sound of water only there is shadow under this red rock this is a sort of and, and you're listening to my favorite, favorite talk, talk show, show the bg show, show with aditya so he proposed and down he sat again as calcas rose among them testor's son the clearest by far of all the seers who scan the flight of birds he knew all things that are all things that are past and all that are to come the seer who led 
the Argive ships to Troy with the second side that God Apollo gave him. For the army's good, the seer began to speak. Achilles, dear to Zeus, you order me to explain Apollo's anger, the distant deadly archer, I will tell it all, but strike a pact with me, swear you will defend me with all your heart, with words and strength of hand, for there is a man I will enrage, I see it now, a powerful man who lords it all over the archives. One the Achaeans must obey, a mighty king, waging against an inferior is too strong, even if he can swallow down his wrath today. Still he will nurse the burning in his chest, until sooner or later he sends it bursting forth. Consider it closely, Achilles, will you save me. And the matchless runner reassured him, Courage! Out with it now, Calchas, reveal the will of God, whatever you may know, and I swear by Apollo, dear to Zeus, the power you pray to. Calchas, when you reveal God's will to the archives, no one, not while I am alive and see the light on earth. No one will lay his heavy hands on you by the hollow ships. None among all the armies, not even if you mean Agamemnon here, who now claims to be by far the best of the Achaeans. This is Saurabh, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The VG Show with Aditya. Jeeves, I said as he accompanied me to my car at the conclusion of the meal, speaking rather peevishly, perhaps, for I was not my usual sunny self. Doesn't it strike you as odd that with infant mortality so rife, a girl like Stiffy should have been permitted to survive into the early 20s? Some mismanagement there. What's the tree I read about somewhere that does you in if you sit under it? The Yupas tree, sir. She is a female Yupas tree. It's not safe to come near her. Disaster on every side is what she strews. And another thing, it's all very well for her to say glibly or airily, sir, the words are synonymous. It's all very well for her to say glibly or airily. Take this blasted ISO to plank, but how do I find him? I can't go rapping on every door in Hockley come Meston saying, excuse me, are you blank? It'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack. A very colorful image, sir. I appreciate your difficulty. I would suggest that you proceed to the local post office and institute inquiries there. Post office officials invariably have information at their disposal as to whereabouts of dwellers in the vicinity. He had not erred. Breaking the car in the hockey come messed on high street, I found that the post office was one of those shops you get in villages where in addition to enjoying the postal facilities, you can purchase cigarettes, pipe tobacco, wool, lollipops, string, socks, boots, overalls, picture postcards and bottles containing yellow non-alcoholic drinks, probably fuzzy. This is Saurabh and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of The Weekly Show with Aditya.